remember, logistic regression, as I mentioned, is um, is to uh, classify something. That means your target variable has to be a, cate a categorical variable. So we can be using this y as is, right? Because remember, this y is uh, is a numerical value. But what we can do is create a y two or you know something that's using um, that's going to be using estimated value, but it's going to be a categorical. So we can then our estimated value. How do you do that? Is say we can actually say just append this to our DF. So we can say estimated value um, bin, right? So we can say DF dot um, estimated values dot. Um, so we talk about uh, lambda function last time. So you can actually use lambda function uh, to say if this um, the estimated value is uh, you know greater than 1 million um, or 700,000, 700, then it's considered as high, and then else it's going to be considered as low, right? So we have two labels. One is high, um, the other is low. Uh, what did I oh, else? Oh, I think I forgot. Uh, yes, so I forgot to put if. So if x is our estimate value, is less, uh, is greater than 700,000, uh, then is uh, is right. Then is high. So let's then look at our DF, right? So DF. So you can actually see in the end, this is low. This is low because this the estimated value is less than seven hundred thousand. So therefore, it's considered as low. And then let's look at something like you know quick um, value counts, right? So. Mm, yeah, it's very not balanced because you can see that, okay, you have most of the data points being low and then a lot, it, um, you know, only like 3,500 being high. So I will lower this to, you know, something like 400,000, right? 400,000 to make it more balanced. It's still, hey, um, okay, if it's greater than 400,000, how about then just 100,000? I don't know. So it's 100,000, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's still not giving me, hey? Oh, it's all just high. Okay, yeah. I think I can put 400. Uh, you kind of have to play with this so that you want to make the class more mm, balanced, right? Uh, okay. About 200,000 and it's high. And then else is low. Oh, no. I think I was doing the opposite. My bad. So I should increase increase the the cutoff. So once uh one million, my apologies. So one million. So then you can see that uh huh? wait. So it's all high, right? So yeah, okay. So if I just put five hundred, sorry. Okay. So now five hundred thousand looks like it's a good balance, right? Like high and low, they're like almost fifty fifty split, and now. Uh, or the other way you can actually do this is just look at histogram. Like we talked about this last time as well. So you can actually look at um, it's in valley dot hist. And then you can plot and you're like, yeah, okay. So most of it's like less than 1 million. And then you can actually create your own bins, right? And say, you know, your bins is 100,000 um, and 200,000, 300,000 and, and so forth, right? So you can actually look at it from here as well. Um, but let's say we found our perfect cutoff. So now we know that this estimate value uh, bins is actually, this is a categorical right, uh, variable because we know that it has high and low, right? So if you just look at df.head again, you can see that it's, you know, you have low, low, and then if you want more, say low, uh, most of it is low, and then some are like high, this one is high. So this is definitely a categorical uh, uh, variable. So now we can use this DF, um, you know, estimated bins and then assign it to, you know, our maybe call it Y2, right? So now we can create our logistic regression, right? So let's say, as usual, we have to initiate our model and call it uh, logistic regression, because LG, uh, if we use LG, it's going to be the same as linear regression. So let's just say log, right? So now log dot fit of our, oh, we have to then do that uh, the same, 
remember, trend has split, right? But now we don't want to use its y2, right? We don't want to use um, y because y is our numerical um, uh, variable, right? That's the original estimated value. Don't, we don't want to use that. So now we can actually fit it with x uh, train. So remember, x is not changing, right? x is the same as before. And then y2 and train, right? So like now it's good. So we have locked up. Uh, score, right? So remember, score is always on test it's as a best best practice, and then two and test, right? So now, I mean, this is still pretty good, like eighty-two percent, right? It's actually actually a great model. So this is to say that eighty-two percent of the time, I am predicting it correctly, right? Meaning, like, if in reality is high, right? This this estimated value bend is high. Then 82% of, uh, and then I'm actually doing pretty good job, right? Then I'm um, predicting that it's high, as high. And then whenever it's low, then um, then I'm predicting it as low, right? So this is to say 82% of the time, I am making the right prediction or classification, right? Compared to like the reality, right? So, um, and then there's another function that is pretty useful. You can actually do dot predict, right? Using like say x test. And this is to give you the prediction. You can see high, low, 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 right? So what if we just like look at this with our true, right? So this is y2 test is our true label, right? So we know this is non label. And this log dot predict x test is the predicted label. So you can actually do the comparison. Right, um, it's not so great in terms of the visuals. Let me just okay, do it this way, and then I can here so you can actually see. Um, let's put this to array, right? So this is how you can actually convert something to array, so you can actually see it better. So the first one I predicted high, but in, in reality was low. The second one I predicted low, and the reality was low, and so forth, right? So this almost will kind of like it makes sense to put this into a matrix. We call this a confusion matrix, right? So this will tell you the type one error, type two error. Um, so again, <laughs> we can actually do this with uh, SQLR, right? So SQLR has pretty much everything that we need. Um, you know, say um, matrix, and then um, and then import. Um, Confusion matrix, right? So that's it. That is what we're gonna be using. So confusion matrix, you can just put two things. What we just have. So let's assign this as like y predict, right? So we know the predicted y, right? So if we just put y uh, true uh, y two test, this is the true label, right? Y two test is a true label, and then what we have predicted is y predict, right? So this will tell me. And confusion matrix. So the whatever you see in diagonal, right, means that I'm making the right uh, prediction, right. So this is to say, um, I'm, <laughs> yeah. This is to say that when you're predicting it um, high, and then it was actually high. You have fifteen thousand uh, of those, right? When you predicted it high, and it was actually high, and then this three seventy seven is when it was actually. Um, low, but you predict it high. So think of this, kind of like your y-axis is is what you have predicted, and then x is what you have uh, your true label. So always remember what you see in diagonal is the right classification, right prediction, and this is your type one error, and this is your type two error, right? So so this is to say I predicted low and it was actually low, and this is like I predicted low but it was actually high. Right, so almost like you can actually see it's like this is your prediction, right? And then, and here is your true label, right? And then in your true label, you're gonna have like high, you're gonna have low, and then in your prediction, you have you know high and low, and then so this is how you can construct the confusion matrix. Um, all right, so then uh, that's great. So we are going to quickly go through, you know, SVM, uh, uh, SVC, um, and then SVR. Uh, so this um, in our next section. So I will stop here, and then uh, let's come back. <laughs>